So a compressor is a plugin or a hardware unit, if you do have the hardware unit, that controls the difference between the loudest parts of the audio signal running through it and the most quiet parts of it and tries to bring it to a level that makes it sound much more controlled, okay? Because a lot of the times when you record vocals, you play drums live, all right, or you play instruments live, there are tendencies for the sounds to become loud at some point. Maybe you strike it too hard or maybe your voice becomes a bit too loud in some part of the song or it becomes quiet, maybe you do not strike your guitar so hard, or your vocals drop in volume, maybe because of the kind of emotion you are trying to pass across. So a compressor helps take out that imbalance, or at least make it not to sound too obvious, so that it sounds consistent in the track, and it sits perfectly on the beats that you are um, recording on. All right, so let's take a look at some features of a compressor. Do note that some compressors do have a little bit more features or a little less features than this. But if you understand these dials and how they work, you're most likely going to find your way around the other types of compressors, okay? So the first we're going to look at is the threshold. Now the threshold, this dial right here, this knob, it tells the compressor the level that the audio signal has to pass in terms of the loudness, right? It has to pass for it to start working. You can write that it's at 0 dB. That means it's not going to work no matter how loud the audio gets. So if I take it to, let's say, minus 7 dB, that means the audio signal has to be above or be within minus 7 dB for it to start working. So if it's at minus 8 dB, it's not going to work, okay? If it's at minus 9 dB, it's not going to work. But until it gets to minus 7 or within the minus 7 range before it starts working, okay? So next right here, we have the ratio. The ratio is simply how hard you want the compression to work. This is the actual compression, okay? Now, right here we have, when you have between one ratio one to up to, let's say three ratio one, they are soft compression, okay? It doesn't clamp down as hard. But when you have from, let's say four ratio one up to, let's say five or even seven ratio one, they are a lot harder, right? It tends to clamp the signal down so that it makes it sound even more consistent. Maybe times you may need to use a soft compression or a hard compression. It depends on how inconsistent the vocal coming in is, okay? That's in terms of the loudness level of the vocal coming in, okay, into the compressor. And then we'll also take a look at the attack and the release. Now, the attack is simply how soon, you can see it's measured in milliseconds, right? It's how soon you want the compressor to start working as soon as it crosses the threshold, okay? That is what the attack is meant for. You want it to start working immediately, so you want it to be fast, like 4.1 milliseconds is faster than, let's say, 45 milliseconds, right? So if you want it to wait a little bit before it starts working, then you can use maybe a slower attack, maybe 30 or 40, depends on what you're working on. But since it's for vocals, you can leave it at, let's say, 20, 25 if you want a slow attack time. And if you want a fast attack time for vocals, typically within 5 to about 10 or 11 milliseconds is fine for fast attacks for vocals, all right? Then the release is how soon you want the compressor to stop working on the vocal coming in when it drops below the threshold. Because there's sometimes that it may hold on to, it may try to keep processing the vocal when it when it has dropped below the threshold, right? But this release now, is you're trying to the compressor, okay, it waits about 200 milliseconds before you let go when it drops below the threshold, okay? So sometimes you may want a fast release or a slow release, depends on, again, how inconsistent the vocal is, okay? So this is basically how most compressors operate. So before we apply this compressor on our vocal, I want you to understand there are other types of compressors, okay? But we're going to group them into two main categories, which is the digital compressors and the emulations, all right? Now, the digital compressors are the typical compressors that come with your door by default. Like if you're using Cubase, you're using Resin, you're using um, Pro Tools, or you're using Logic Pro, the typical compressor that comes with your door are usually digital compressors. They do not add color or much color to your tracks. They do not add any texture, really. They just do the simple job of compressing that's keeping the signal running through it balanced, okay? But there are other compressors that do a little bit more. They can add a different texture to the sound. They can make it sound a bit heavier in terms of like maybe the low frequencies. Some can make it sound brighter by adding a little bit of bump in the high end, all right? So it all depends. So some compressors do a little bit more than just compressing, okay? But we'll, we'll take a look at that shortly in this lesson. Right here, we have the vocal. And, you know, since this is a beginner tutorial, it may not be easy for you to actually hear what's going on for threshold. So I'm going to show you a simple trick you can use to 
find what the threshold is now i'm experienced so i can know this by just listening but for beginners i'm going to load a db meter a lot of plugins a lot of digital audio workstations do come with such which tells you the current signal all right so you load it at the bottom right here all right that's last so you can see the audio signal of the sound all right so let's play it and see let's make this bigger and i'm also going to detach it so it can be consistent for us to to keep saying so let's play and see every time oh, you think my mind oh i no deny yeah 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 it began to do me funny let me say you want me my honey so you can see the vocal drops to somewhere around here when it's playing so we want to pick out the lowest points where the vocal drops and you can see it drops to around uh, somewhere around minus 20 db right and it's Rise up to about minus six db as well. So let's play it again and see. Every time oh, you think my mind oh, I no deny So you can see the lowest threshold where it gets to is somewhere around minus twenty db. So this is an easier way for beginners to capture or learn where the threshold to start from. And because it's around minus twenty db, that's not working. So dial it to 20 db okay we may go a little bit lower so that the compressor actually works so let's take it to let's say about 23 or 24 db somewhere around there okay so that it can actually really start working properly so that is, remember that is the lowest level it gets to that is the vocal and then now the ratio so let's leave the ratio at let's say four ratio one for a start okay and we want a fast attack okay we want it most times we want a fast attack for your vocal and we can leave the release like this. So let's see how it sounds now. And if you notice now the volume drops because typically when you compress, you tend to lose a little bit of the loudness. And that's where a lot of compressors do have a gain compensation knob or some call it gain, some call it output. Okay, all you have to do is compensate for the loss in loudness okay so let's increase this and adjust it so we can hear the vocal till it sounds loud again Every time, oh, you think my mind oh i not deny yeah 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 baby girl is the thing you funny let me say you want me my honey but i like you the for the money so you can see now it sounds normal again so now let's turn it off Every time, oh. turn it back on Every time, oh. so now how do we know that compression has happened so now let's listen to parts where there are inconsistencies okay so i'm going to just solo the vocal okay are your friends see the busy body let me set the ground up for me but i like to do me connie for money why oh yo my love so if you look at this point right here for money why oh yo my love you can see how dynamic it is when i turn on the compressor Money, why, oh, yo, my love. You can see how controlled it is. Money, why, oh, yo, my love. Money, why, oh, yo, my love. It's that easy, okay? Compression is really easy. You just need to understand how those knobs work, okay? When you can find a threshold, you dial in the ratio and you dial in the gain compensation. Now, most times you should be fine, all right? So now we've compressed the, the vocal. Now let's hear it in context with the beat again. Busy body, let me set the ground up for me. Gonna like to do me funny, for money. So earlier, I made mention of analog model plugins, all right, which add some texture to the vocal or sounds that generally run through them, okay? And that's why we're going to be using the CLA76, which is a FET compressor because it has a fast attack, okay? It has a very fast attack and it also adds some polish, some shine to the vocal. So if you want your vocal to sound maybe round and a bit heavier, you can use a tube compressor like the Fairchild 660, okay? And there are many more other types of tube compressors you can use, okay? So I'm going to be using this guy right now to mix the vocal. 
So you can see we have the inputs, the outputs. But if you observe, it's not like this that we have the threshold, the ratio, the attack, the release. So we have the inputs and the outputs, and we have just attack and release and the ratio. First of all, you should know I'm not using this to actually do any real compression anymore. I've already fixed the dynamic issues from the vocal. We're just trying to add some tone to the vocal to make it sound higher quality, all right? So the input is used to control the amount of compression you want. That is, it combines the threshold, all right? So that is, this is basically the threshold, all right? So you can adjust this. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. So remember, if we take out the way here, it's really not doing much when it's at zero. Busy body, tell me set. So let's just have it somewhere around, let's say minus 12, all right? Like I said, we're not using this for any real compression. It's just to add tone and character to the vocal. Busy body, tell me set the ground up. And then the output is just like your game compensation knob. That's for this plugin, all right? Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. But not like so we don't essentially want this compressor to make the vocals louder. We just want the tone from the compressor, all right? While it may do a little bit of compressing, all right? So let's listen and see when we turn it off. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. But not like to do me connie for money. You can hear the way it's clamping down the vocal. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. But not like to do me connie for money. So let's compensate, increase it a little bit. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. But not like to do me connie for money. Why, oh, yo, my love. All right, so remember, we're trying to match the loudness level. Okay, we don't want it to increase the volume of the vocal. We just want the tone from this compressor. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. But not like to do me connie. You can use a more aggressive ratio if you like, but since this is a vocal, we just leave this at. For ratio one, this is a direct compression style. We're not trying to do parallel compression, which we'll get to shortly. So we'll keep the ratio at four. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. But not like to do. So let's listen to the whole song and see. Busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. Oh, you take my mind, oh, and not deny it. Baby girl, you take me honey. Tell me say you won't be my honey. And when I turn it off, you take my mind, and nothing I Let me say you can see there's a way it kind of falls into the mix when this compressor is turned off, right? It kind of falls back into the mix. You can hear the vocal clearly, but it falls back in a little bit. And that's why this compression style using an analog model plugin like a first compressor or a tube or even an opto compressor can really help give it more presence and life. Now let's move on into something a bit more advanced. It's really easy to do, but it's a bit more advanced, okay, which is parallel compression. And you may want to do this if you want to add more weight, more beef to your vocal, okay? You don't always have to do this, but if you do this correctly, it can make your vocal sound heavier, okay? Especially when you record with a cheap mic, when your mic doesn't have enough presence going on, you can use this to compensate for that as well. So I'm just going to route this into an empty track, just rename this um, parallel um, comp, all right? Then I'll, 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 then I'll just simply squash it with enough compressor that is make it very aggressive, more aggressive than I typically would, all right? So I'm going to just load up a compressor now. And then use, I could use a stock compressor if that works as well. You can use a third party compressor, okay? So, but let me just use a stock compressor so you really understand the picture of what's going on. So, I'm going to make this threshold, right? Take it all the way down. They increase the ratio, make it very aggressive. It really works hard on your vocal, okay? Let's say about 10 to 12 ratio one. And then you can make it really fast in the attack, make it very fast attack as well. I make it maybe a slower release. Okay, let's make the release slower. Let's say about 500 milliseconds, okay? Slower release, somewhere around 500, okay? And then let's listen to how it sounds. So I'm going to take this away from the master but so you can hear the processing going on. You take my mind, oh, and not deny it. Baby girl, you take me, honey. Tell me, say you won't be my honey, but I like you for the money. 
Mm-hmm. All your friends see the busy body. Tell me, set the ground up for me. But not like to do me money for money. Why, oh, yo, my. You can hear how compressed and squashed it sounds, but it does bring out a lot of the breath. So we can quickly take out that breath load it up before the compressor to fix the breath problem okay so i'm going to just load up a depressor and then make just fix that problem then listen again you take my mind oh i know deny baby girl little to me connie tell me say you won't be my honey so let's turn it back on and we're going to just mash it up like create a blend between this guy and this guy. So I'm going to turn this down and then adjust it till I feel like there's enough weight or body coming in. But first off, I'm going to exaggerate so you can really hear the presence, all right? So I'm going to take it all the way up here. So you can really hear the presence, right? So let me take it down, right? I feel like that's a bit too much. Let me solve it so you hear. You take my mind, oh, I not deny. So this is without it. You take my mind. To me, Connie, tell me, say you won't be my honey, but not like you, they for the money. Mm -hmm. All your friends see the busy body, tell me, set the ground up for me. Then this is with it. To me, Connie, tell me, say you won't be my honey, but not like you, they for the money. Mm -hmm. All your friends see the busy body, tell me, set the ground up for me, but not like to do me. Connie. So if you listen closely, there's a little bit of weight that comes and that's because this is just the amount of blend I need, okay? You can make it a little bit more if you feel like you need more weight on your vocals. To me, Connie, tell me say you won't be my honey, but not like you the for the money. Mm -hmm. All your friends see the busy body, tell me set the ground up for me. And it brings in more presence, okay? So let's just listen to the whole thing in context with the beats, all right? To me, Connie. So you can see with good compression, you can make your vocal sound a whole lot better, all right? So let me turn off everything we've done so far. Let's hear the before and the after for better comparison. I'm going to turn this off and turn this off. Let's listen again. And then let's listen to the after, all right? So you can see how much more presence good compression can bring into your vocal, okay? So this is something that I feel, whether you're a beginner producer or you're an intermediate producer, or even you're trying to learn how to mix, you should learn how to compress properly, okay? So if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to leave me with a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. I remain so classy. See you soon. Cheers.